in the previous three video clips, we explained to you how the, the Reserve Bank can influence the size of the money market deficit. And we also explained to you that the Reserve Bank wants to maintain a money market deficit so that the banks can come and borrow from it at the repo rate, because that is the only way that the, the Reserve Bank has to influence the interest rate in the economy and thereby the money creation and therefore the inflation rate. Now in this video clip, we are going to explain to you how the Reserve Bank finances the liquidity deficit of the banks through using repurchase agreements. You're going to see that similarly to foreign exchange swaps that Adil explained in the previous video clip, repurchase agreements also consist of two legs. In the first leg, remember that the bank has a deficit, so it needs to borrow money from the Reserve Bank. So what the banks will do is they will sell certain instruments to the Reserve Bank. These financial instruments that they can sell to the Reserve Bank include the same instruments that they can hold as part of the liquid asset requirements. So it's Reserve Bank debentures, Treasury bills, Land Bank bills, and Government stock. So the banks will sell these instruments to the Reserve Bank and the Reserve Bank will pay them in rand and the amount that they will receive will be equal to the market value of these instruments that, they, that the banks are selling to the Reserve Bank. So that is the first leg. Then, in the second leg, which will take place exactly seven days later, the banks then have to buy back these financial instruments. So the financial instruments go back to the banks. The banks now have them available as part of their liquid asset requirements again. And the banks have to give the money back to the Reserve Bank. So the rands go back to the Reserve Bank. But in the second leg, when the banks buy it back, they have to pay the price that was paid in the first leg, so the market price, of the first leg, plus interest, at the repo rate. Right, and it's that repo rate that will then influence the interest rate at which the banks will be willing to lend money to you. So you can see that in the first leg, rand flowed to the banks, and therefore the money market deficit was financed. But in the second leg, the banks have to buy back these instruments and pay interest at the repo rate.